Well, take us through a few of the mechanics of the machine. Um, the heart of the, uh, this frame, uh, which can be thought of as part of the uh, central processing unit uh, of a modern day system, and uh, is the electromechanical shaft adder. Uh, this adds the totals for a particular runner, so it's associated with a, a runner, and there's one for each runner in the field, and this system has 24 of them. Uh, they were driven by a main drive shaft, which runs down the, the rear of all the adders in the hall frame, and they are driven by DC motors at the end of the frame. Um, the uh, heart of the adder is the um, adding shafts. There are two of them, and they have uh, springs at the end of them, uh, one at the rear, one at forward. The rear shaft has two escapement wheels on it, and the front shaft has six escapement wheels on it. The, um, adding shafts have a clutch in them so that the energy to drive the escapement mechanisms comes from the spring and the spring is wound by the main drive shaft and when the spring is fully tensioned the clutch separates the continuous motion of the drive shaft from the erratic motion associated with the betting. Uh, the adding shafts have escapement wheels on them and uh, the the uh, number of teeth on the escapement wheels determines the value of the bet. So the greater the distance between the teeth, the higher the value of the bet. The heart of the adder is the epicyclic gear arrangement. That's these gears that can be seen between the, the um, escapement wheels. And uh, the property of these gears is such that the rotation at any of these escapement wheels is the total of the motion of the escapement wheel and every escapement wheel downstream from the counter. So that by the time we come to the counter, the uh, uh, rotation represents the motion of all the escapement wheels in both adders. The escapement wheels are driven by solenoids underneath the escapement wheels, which um, activate an escapement mechanism which is like a ratchet, which allows the escapement wheel to move one tooth. And the um, solenoids are driven by impulses from the ticket issuing machines. And uh, the proponents of this technology always told me, um, I started here with the new computer systems that replaced the Julius totes, and uh, the proponents of these systems delighted in telling me that this system could do something my new computer system could not and that was simultaneously record bets. Um, due to this adding mechanism, uh, these escapement wheels can be activated singularly or uh, multiple in any sequence or all at once uh, and multiples at once. And uh, in so doing, they are capable of recording uh, simultaneous transactions. The new computer system, albeit a loosely coupled multiprocessor, uh, was not capable of parallel processing, so all transactions were processed in sequence. And uh, albeit so quickly that it all seemed to be happening at once, but technically the proponents of this technology were quite right. This could do something the new computer system could not. Seems like it'd be a, uh, George would have sat down overnight and said, right, let's just throw something together. It's, it's quite a complex, even though you say it can do, but it's quite a complex machine. Um, all these things are, are open to development work. Um, in fact, uh, uh, the tote definitely was not as you see it today instantly, even the computer systems. And uh, a lot of people probably would not realize, but uh, uh, the initial computer totes were not the full functionality that we have today. Um, they, they were cell-only systems to begin with. So the uh, uh, paying aspect of it uh, came quite a lot later. And the systems that uh, I introduced here uh, for automatic totalizators, the computer ones that superseded these, were the first cell pay system for the company. Uh, so that uh, they, uh, for the first time, uh, recorded a barcode on the tickets. Uh, one side the barcode was the logical complement of the other. And uh, when uh, the ticket was read, the, the one side barcode was uh, complemented and compared to the other side, that was a good indication that uh, the barcode had not been tampered with or yep. uh, damaged. And uh, um, hmm. then you could, you know, I guess
guess when you walk back in and you say, right, I want this ticket paid, yes. it would read again and say, OK. Yes, well, now um, people, we have a system on course that calculates dividends. Uh, we're talking about this first one. And uh, having read the ticket, uh, those dividends would be uh, um, looked up by a, a, a pay request would go up to the transaction processors. Um, it would refer to the dividends, calculate the payout amount, the pay reply would go back to the ticket issuing machine, and the operator would be informed what they had to pay the, um, the customer. Uh, just an interesting note on that. Uh, when those systems were first introduced in Brisbane, uh, they actually calculated that the on-course systems actually calculated the dividends for the whole of Queensland. And they were disseminated throughout Queensland uh, through what was known as QTAB at the time. And this just demonstrates too that totalizers weren't what they are today straight off. Uh, QTAB eventually implemented that functionality in their systems, uh, but that was after the on-course systems having computed the dividends for quite some time. Pause there. Beautiful.